Okay, welcome to another Orbiter 2010 video. And this video is going to be another video that will have special emphasis on getting people started with Orbiter, people who are brand new to Orbiter that have uh, little to no experience with Orbiter. Now, I do want to assume that you already saw the first video that I put together, so at least you have that information to build on. We're actually outside of Orbiter at the moment, and the reason for that is because I want to show this launch pad and just make sure that we're on the same page from the start here. One thing that I want to cover very briefly is in the launch pad, you'll notice that there are these different uh, tabs over here on the side, and one of them that we want to look at is modules. So if you click on modules, then you'll notice that there are are all these uh, boxes. Some of them are checked, some of them are unchecked. We won't uh, definitely will not get into what all of these mean at this point, but there's one module in particular that we do want to make sure that we have enabled, and that is the uh, scenario editor. So if you scroll all the way down this list and come to the section that's on uh, tools and dialogues, you'll see down here where it says SCN Editor, and we just want to make sure that, that we have that one checked because we will be using that from time to time. It's not a cheat. We're not using it to cheat or anything like that. We're just going to be occasionally using it uh, to help us learn some things. So in Modules, just scroll down the list, make sure that SCN Editor is checked, and then we're good. Then we're going to come over here to the Scenarios tab. And to make sure that we're on the same page, go to the Checklists folder. And we're going to use the Quick Start scenario for quite a few uh, different flights that we're going to be doing. So choose the Quick Start option, hit Launch Orbiter, and be patient for a moment while that loads. And once it finishes loading, we should be looking at something like this. And this is the 2D, or rather this is the virtual cockpit. And I'm not going to get into detail on what that means. For now, we're just going to skip the virtual cockpit by pressing F8 to bring up uh, this view instead. And this view is the glass cockpit. Now, something uh, that I do want to point out is when you're on the ground during the day, sometimes it's a little difficult to see this HUD. HUD stands for Heads Up Display, and that's this green information back here. It's a, it's a situation where the sky in the back is, you know, kind of a pale blue, and this green just doesn't show up very well. Something that you can do to get a better contrast, at least while you're on the ground, is press Alt-H, and that will change this from uh, green to this kind of ugly orange. Uh, if you press Alt-H again, it'll turn it yellow. Alt-H again will turn it blue. Alt-H one more time will go back to green. On the ground, this orange contrast works a little better. Uh, once I'm up in space, I definitely prefer to change it back to green but down here on the ground at least, it makes this a lot easier to see. Now, we do want to cover a little bit more, or at least I want to cover a little bit more, about uh, getting into orbit, because that's where everything begins. This program is called Orbiter, and if you can't get into orbit, then the program doesn't really have much purpose. So let's uh, go ahead and just close out one of these MFDs because we do not we do not need both of them open so we'll go ahead and close this side by pressing uh, power actually you know what I take that back we will leave both of them open on this side I'm going to press SEL that just stands for select and by pressing select it lets me choose which MFD I want to have open on this side and if I press uh, SEL multiple times, 
it goes through the different pages. So here I have page one. All these MFDs are available on page one. And if I press SEL again, it shows me the MFDs that are available on page two. And finally, if I press SEL a third time, it will actually just come back to whichever MFD I had open. Unless, of course, there was a third page, then it would display the third page. But in this case, there's not a third page. But on this side, we're going to bring up uh, Surface MFD because this will actually be uh, useful since I'm not going to have that 2D cockpit open. And on this side, whenever we're in, it doesn't matter which side. If you prefer to have Surface over there, that's fine. But on one side, we'll have Surface, and on the other side, we'll have Orbit MFD. Whenever you're getting, whenever you're getting into Orbit, it, this is probably quite obvious, but you want to have Orbit MFD available to you in almost all cases. Now, I am very interested in avoiding all technical terminology as long as I possibly can. I only want to introduce new words and phrases as they're needed. For starters here, whenever we're looking at Orbit MFD by default, this is generally what you have where it says uh, FRM, and that stands for frame, and that's currently on ECL. And for the time being, this doesn't matter. You can change the frame between EQ, U, and ECL, but for the time being, that does not matter for our purpose. So we can simply ignore this. It will not have any impact on our orbit at all. PRJ stands for projection, and the way we change the projection is by pressing this button here. It changes here from ECL to SHP. SHP, in this case, stands for ship and ship is us, that's our vessel. This vessel here is the delta glider, and the projection is the ship. Now, projection actually does have some meaning here, and the projection is simply what orbit MFD is going to look like. It's how it's going to project the orbit on this display. For our purpose, and for most of your flights for a for getting started and for a long time to come, the only way you're ever going to have this set will be projection ship. So if it says projection ECL, or if it happens to say projection TGT in some cases, which is target, then in almost all cases for starting out, you're almost always going to want it to be on ship. There's one other setting that you tend to adjust um, almost all the time, and that is the difference between a planocentric orbit display and a display where your altitudes are shown above the surface. The default behavior of Orbit MFD is to show your altitudes in a mode that's called planocentric, and that is where your altitude is measured from the, uh, the center of the Earth, it's measuring the radius, out to uh, out to whatever your orbital altitude happens to be and in this case since we're sitting here on the ground our altitude is zero so our distance is being shown as 6,371 kilometers and that's just how far away we are from the center of the earth and that's why it's called planocentric but in most cases it's going to be more useful to know what your altitude is, not from the center of the Earth, but rather how high you are up above the ground. So in most cases, we'll press this DST, which stands for distance, and we'll change our distance to uh, whatever we are above the ground. And now it says our distance above the ground is 2.57, which stands for uh, meters. We're 2.57 meters above the ground. And that's basically just the height of the delta glider. I'd imagine if you had somebody come out here with a measuring stick and place down a couple of uh, meter sticks, they would be you know one meter, uh, 2.5 meters to the 
center of the delta glider. I'm assuming that's where it's measuring that number from. Okay, so once we have some basic understanding of how we need to have our MFDs set up and looking, then we can just basically take off and get into orbit. When you don't have any particular destination in mind, the most efficient uh, way to get to orbit is to take off and head to 90 degrees. But in most cases, you're probably not going to head to exactly 90 degrees. So in this, in this case, in this uh, demonstration on how to get to orbit, just for the sake of uh, practice, because we already did the 90 degree heading in the last video, we're going to take off and head toward uh, 45 degrees just to have a slightly different heading. And that heading is something that is fairly close to what you'll be using when it comes time to get um, when it comes time to learn how to go to the ISS. So we're going to choose a heading of 45 degrees this time. Now in order to move forward, in order to get going, uh, same as before, if you just press the plus key and let go, then it just gives you one burst of main engine and that's it. So what we'll do instead is we'll press control and hold it, then we'll tap the control key to lock the engine. So let's do that. Control hold it, press the control key to lock it, now we're hands off. And we're just waiting for our uh, speed, our velocity to get up to a couple hundred meters per second. In the meantime we can kind of press that you know, one and three to keep the vessel centered on the runway. And we're about two couple hundred uh, meters a second, so we'll press two to tilt the vessel upwards and then immediately G to raise the landing gear. Gear up. And again, notice that I'm not uh, pitching up to 90 degrees. I'm not doing something crazy like this. You know, pitch, 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 way pitch. You know, a lot of people, that's kind of what they tend to want to do at the start. And we're, we're not doing that. We're just, we're just kind of going forward with the vessel, you know, at a fairly low at a fairly low pitch. And then we'll just use a little bit of six or four to, to roll the vessel so that we can get the heading that we want. And remember we said that we're going to go for a heading of 45 degrees. And in this case, it's shorter to bank to the left, or excuse me, to bank to the right, which is east. So I'm banking that direction. And as I stated in the other video, we just want to make sure that our velocity vector, that's this bullseye looking thing, stays above the center line. But we also have something more useful to us now, which is this uh, vertical speed indicator. Notice that it's currently negative, which means I'm actually going down. That's not a good thing. So let's get, uh, press two a couple of times to raise our velocity vector so that it's above that line. And we can see that our vertical speed's positive. And we just kind of keep on this attitude until our heading has gotten around to what we want and in this case again we said we want a heading of about 45 degrees so there we are now we'll roll out and once you have the heading that you need then you can start a more aggressive climb and a more aggressive doesn't mean to roll the vessel uh, or excuse me it doesn't mean to pitch the vessel all the way back on its tail, it just means we want to pitch it to about 40 degrees or so, and that will give us a nice climb. And as you get up through the atmosphere, you'll notice the sky starts getting a bit darker, and when that happens, this orange contrast may no longer be the best color. So if you want to press Alt-H to get something else, maybe maybe the yellow, uh, blue's not very good. And the, the green is okay at this point, so let's just go with that. Now, we don't really need to do a whole lot to, uh, to get ourselves into orbit using the Delta Glider. The Delta Glider is very forgiving, and it's very user-friendly. It's very new user-friendly. So you don't want to try to fight the vessel. You don't want to try to 
force it into the sky somehow. That in fact, the less you do, the less input that you give it, the happier it's going to be. It's probably going to be able to get itself to orbit almost completely hands off. All we really want to do is just kind of take a look every now and then and make sure that we're not falling out of the sky. And a few indicators that we have for that are this here, the velocity vector. That's this bullseye looking thing. You'll hear me use that term a lot. You can read about it in the orbiter.pdf, which is located in the doc directory. That gives you all the terminology. But we notice that our velocity vector is above that center line. But perhaps more importantly, by looking at surface MFD, we can see that our vertical speed is positive. So we are climbing, we're going up. If this vertical speed were negative, then the velocity vector would be below that line and we would be going down. We would be heading back toward, uh, back toward sea level. And in this case, we're out over the ocean, so we would crash into the ocean. Another indicator that we have that's useful is this down here, it says VACC, that is our vertical acceleration. And that gives us an idea of whether or not this number is going to continue to go up or if it's going to start to go down. Notice that our vertical acceleration has now slipped into the negative and we're still going up because our vertical speed's positive. But since our vertical acceleration has now gone negative, which is fine by the way, but you'll notice our vertical speed is now going down. It's We're, we're still going up, because <laughs> notice our altitude's increasing, and our vertical speed's positive, but we're slowly, we're not going up at the same rate that we were a moment ago. Vertical speed's slowly coming down. So that's just something that we can kind of keep an eye on, is how much our vertical acceleration is once we get closer to perhaps zero on our vertical speed then we might want to put in a bit more input this direction which you'll notice raises our vertical acceleration and that will in turn eventually have an impact on our vertical speed but getting to orbit is actually very very simple and it doesn't take more than one or two tries um, to, to understand what you have to do but it does perhaps take a half dozen or dozen attempts to really finesse your trips up to orbit there's kind of a learning there's kind of something that you'll learn on every flight and when you're just getting the Delta glider or some other craft into a generic orbit that you don't care about then you won't learn nearly as much about the actual process of getting into orbit as you will when you start doing things that are more useful like getting into specific orbits for rendezvousing with the space station so for this part at least there isn't a whole lot to talk about and I won't be covering anything farther on getting into orbit generically. All future um, you know, videos for this very basic, basic getting started with Orbiter series will have to have some focus on getting into orbit for the sake of going somewhere, for the sake of doing something. So we kept our heading, um, you know, we started off at 45, but you'll notice that it's kind of slipped around to 50. That actually happens because of the, uh, forget the word, there's an effect that causes that to happen. It's the Borealis effect or something like that. But we're just gently climbing up through the uh, sky. Our horizontal speed, that's how fast we're going across the ground, is at 3 point, uh, it's almost 3.5 kilometers per second, which is 3,500 meters per second. Notice our vertical speed getting very close to zero, and it's actually not a problem if we dip into the negative for a moment. In fact, I'm just going to let that happen, just to, just to show you. 
because one thing you might be concerned about as a new Orbanaut is that, oh no, I'm going down and there's nothing that I can do about it, so I want to panic and start pressing 2 immediately. Notice I'm not doing that. What will happen here is we'll get down and do the, uh, we'll, we'll go down a little bit, we'll lose a few hundred meters or maybe even a kilometer or two of altitude, but then you'll see our vertical acceleration goes into the positive, and once that happens, now the vertical speed is going the other direction, and we'll eventually we'll start climbing again. And that will happen on its own just as a natural result of the fact that we're increasing in velocity and we're getting into the lower, uh, we're getting into some lower air, so we're getting more vertical lift. If you don't want that to happen, and usually I don't, by the way, but I just let it happen in this case just to prove a point. But if you don't want to see your vertical speed go negative, you can fix that very simply just by keeping an eye on things and then putting in a little bit of two or pull back on the joystick if you have a joystick. Uh, just tap two a little bit and that will kind of force your vessel to keep a, you know, to keep a positive climb. And usually that's what you want. You know, I can't really think of any good reason to ever let your vessel lose altitude. Uh, at least not in the initial part of the flight. The actual space shuttle, if you ever happen to get really interested in orbiter and you start looking at uh, trajectories, or I should say telemetry for like an actual space shuttle flight, uh, something that I found interesting at least is that the space shuttle, once it reaches a certain altitude, it actually does temporarily go down and loses a couple dozen miles worth of altitude, I believe, before they, uh, uh, I guess it's when they drop the main tank and then regain the altitude. I don't remember exactly when it happens, but nevertheless, uh, it's not something to concern yourself with as long as you're not diving down toward the ground and a nosedive or something like that. So we're just basically letting things develop. We're letting things happen. And if you really want, and if you're impatient, you know, like I mentioned in the other video, you can use time warp to warp the, through this process. But I, I just, I really dis, um, I really would discourage you from doing time warp when you're doing atmospheric flight. It's just a very bad habit. And when you get um, to the point where you're getting into landings, you basically cannot use time warp. It will, all, it will ruin your landing almost every time. So if you cannot be patient enough to spend the eight or nine minutes that it takes to get to orbit, then maybe orbiter isn't for you. <laughs> So we're almost there. We're at 6,600 meters per second. And the true airspeed, which is not the exact same as the orbital speed, but when the true airspeed says that we're at 7,500 meters a second, we will be very close to our orbital velocity. And what I really want to watch here as things get very close to that number is kind of the APA, and I want to watch my... Uh, time to apoapsis as it's getting farther ahead of me and as we did before we can start to back off the main engines now so that things don't get out of control and I do recommend doing this especially when you're new and getting started as you're approaching orbital speed orbital velocity just kind of back down the main engines and when this APA reaches about 200 kilometers typically is what you want for a generic orbit that's when you want to shut down the engines and we can control that again just by you know babysitting the engines a little bit and you notice the higher the the closer we get the faster it moves so here in just a moment we'll be at 200 and there we are so I killed the engines at about 200 and you will notice 
that this will continue to climb here even though the engines are off and you might be wondering well why is that happening well it happens because we're for a brief moment here at least we're still low enough in the atmosphere that we're getting a little bit of lift there's still just trace amounts of nitrogen and you know oxygen helium hydrogen whatever it is up here in this part of the atmosphere there's still enough of those gases that are passing over the wings that we're still generating a little bit of lift and that's why our altitude uh, our apoapsis is continuing to increase but that will stop happening once we get a little bit further up so let's go ahead and press T one time because we're basically in space now and as we get farther out you'll notice that this will completely stabilize and we won't be generating any lift any longer I would say by now we're probably not getting any lift at all now once you get um, up to the point where you're ready to start doing orbital maneuvers you want to press the H key on the keyboard to toggle between uh, surface HUD again that's a, a heads up display currently we're on surface that's SR FCE and if we press H it goes to dock and if we press H again it goes to orbit when we're in orbit which we are now and we're going to be doing orbital maneuvers we want to have the orbit HUD up the first priority always for getting uh, your orbit you know cleaned up uh, that's one way to word it is to circularize your orbit once you reach the high point point. and remember in the last video we talked about the the concept of going uphill when you get to the top of the hill that's the highest point of the orbit that's the apoapsis and another term that's used specifically around the earth is apogee but apogee applies only to earth so I tend to use the word apoapsis which applies to all bodies we know how far we are away from the top of the hill by looking at that number here APT time to the apoapsis so we've got uh, quite a bit of time we've got 985 seconds I don't know what that is off the top of my head but that's you know 14 15 minutes something like that and we don't have to wait for that to pass in real time we're no longer in the atmosphere so I'm not concerned about you know messing things up due to time warp so we can warp time forward easily by pressing T and if we really want if we're really impatient we can press T twice and go at a hundred but be really careful with your time warps because it's really easy especially when you're new to just overdo it and you'll go to a ten or a hundred or a thousand and you'll blow right past the point that you need to do your maneuver and and you mess up your whole flight just because of time warp error so it's T to warp time forward and then it's R uh, you know to sort of revert back to the previous state so in this case we're just going between 10x in real time so one press of T for 10x and then one press of R to get back to real time and as we approach the apoapsis as we approach the highest point it's a good idea to come back to real time and then get in position before you reach the high point you don't want to wait like for example let's say that our orbit or let's say that our um, our orientation was way out like something crazy let's just say it was like this all right may wait for that to stabilize so our orientations way off when we know we know that when we get to apoapsis we need to burn uh, prograde in order to circularize the orbit but, 
But if we wait till we get all the way to that point, and then we uh, come back to real time and go pro grade, what will happen is we'll miss, we'll, well, we won't completely miss our opportunity, but we'll be late. At the very least, we'll be late. So keep an eye on your time. And when you're almost up to that point, come back to real time and get the ship in position. And we can do that either by pressing prograde or if we want, we can do it manually. And we can see here where this triangle says PG, that's prograde. It's telling us where prograde is at. So we can rotate there manually. But most new pilots will probably just want to press the prograde button. It's just a lot easier, obviously. And this just makes sure that we're facing the uh, direction that we need to be facing in order to get our orbit perfectly uh, or near perfectly circular. Because currently, the lowest point of our orbit, let me introduce a new term here, periapsis, that's the lowest point of the orbit, is negative 59, uh, it's almost negative 60, which is below the surface. So our lowest point of our orbit is is subterranean. It's like a it's like a cave. So we would come all the way if we didn't adjust our orbit to here in a moment. Let me actually pause orbiter for just a moment. If we don't adjust our orbit, then once we get to the top of the hill here in just 25 seconds, then we're going to go down and somewhere over to this point, we're going to be hitting the dense atmosphere and burn up. Uh, or, you know, we'd have to be very careful to land otherwise. But if we didn't do anything, we'd get all the way around to, it looks like about this point here, and we would smack into the ground. We'd smack into the ground at, you know, a very high velocity, and things would not be good. So let me go ahead and unpause. And I'm going to do what I did before, which is to just add a little bit of main engine. And what I'm watching is this time to apoapsis. If I add in a lot of main engine, you'll notice that, uh, let me add more, you'll notice that this is going up. That means we're pushing the high point of our orbit out in front of us, and that's not what we want to do. We don't want to push it out in front of us. We just want to add in enough main engine so that that number kind of keeps going down. In fact, it's going up even with just a little bit of a main engine and if the main engine is actually too much what we can do is switch over to translation by pressing the uh, translation the slash key and if we use the number six on the on the uh, key numeric keypad then you can notice that our PEA is going up even though we're not even using main engines we're just using translation thrusters. Of course, now we've gone past the top of the hill, so we need to go ahead and use a bit of main engine to finish circularizing the orbit. And we're very close. A little bit of translation. And you can see that the orbit is now very circular. The lowest point is 205.3 kilometers and the highest point is 206 kilometers. So that's only a difference of 700 meters. And then we can turn the uh, prograde off to uh, shut that autopilot off. And now we are in a good proper orbit. We can go around the Earth almost indefinitely without ever having to worry about crashing back down. I think there might be some small amount of orbit decay that happens at this altitude, so maybe in 20 years or something, we might eventually crash back into the Earth. But for all intents and purposes, we're fine. And if we want to see where we are at above the Earth's surface, we can come over here, well, either side. But this one, this side would probably make more sense because we don't need surface MFD anymore. We can press SEL for select and we can bring up the map MFD and we can see where we are at 
in reference to the Earth. Currently, we've got some additional information here that we don't need. So what we can do is press target, no orbit, and that will turn off those yellow lines just to get rid of some information. And we can also press target, no base, and that will get rid of some extra data down there that we don't need. And this is showing our projected orbit for the next three orbits. Currently, we are here off the southern tip of Saudi Arabia. And if we uh, press T to warp time forward, we can even go to 100 at this point, because now we've got a nice stable orbit. We don't have to worry about things getting messed up. Uh, we can see what's happening here as we go around the planet. Now we're down here almost below the southern tip of Australia, coming around over top of um, New Zealand. Now we're across the day-night terminator. So we're coming into sunrise. You can see the sun over there. <coughs> and if we continue warping time forward, we'll come over top of the United States. And just one thing to mention here about this orbit, uh, this line will be the orbit that we're currently on in three orbits from now, which is, the, uh, that's one orbit, two orbits, three orbits. Uh, three orbits from now, it's just interesting to see that we're going to be crossing right over top of Hawaii. And again, we know that just by counting these lines. This, is, this line is our current orbit. On the next time that we go around, we're going to be at this point. And then on the third time around, we're going to cross that point. And we can do that very quickly. Let's go out to 1,000. So you can see this time we're going to come up this way. And then on the third time around, we're going to cross right over top of Hawaii, which is right there. And you can also see that as we do that, the uh, orbit MFD starts, or rather map MFD starts drawing new lines to indicate where our future orbits are going to be. So now the next time we come around, we're going to be way up here. Okay, I think that's a uh, good enough a bit of information for another basic video on getting up into orbit. Again, it requires uh, just a little bit of personal time and attention. So just do a little bit of practice flying and you'll eventually be able to get it yourself into uh, orbit easily and you'll be able to do it every single time and you won't have any problems with it. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and leave a comment down below and I'll see you in the next video.